Bowie cash crisis worse. Talking about Venezuela once again. Systemic important banks. They removed the one that they called monetary Hey there, hope all is well. Back here today with some RT News updates. And as you tell them, today's title, I'm going to be sharing with you some statistics that just recently came out in reference to the fact that half of Americans in 2017 experienced some form of hardship, whether they couldn't cover their medical costs, cost of living, food, or something of that nature, as well as the fact that, the fact that half of 18-year-old under children in America live in a household that receives some form of aid. And these are all statistics from prior years, not to mention what it might be right now. But before I dive into today's articles, as always... RTD I want to encourage you to click the subscribe button along with the notification tab to be informed of future updates as well as live streams. Also join me on Twitter where I share posts throughout the day on various subject matters dealing with our monetary system as well as whatever is happening in the news that I can't get to via video. Make sure you click the button down below to be notified when things are posted. So as I mentioned I have two articles I want to share with you dealing with some recent statistics on what's happening in the real street. Not necessarily this artificial information we hear from mainstream sources that would have you believe that everything is all fine and well for the average person. And so one of the things I want to do with RTD News is make sure, make sure I highlight some of the fine print and what's happening with Wall Street, the Main Street, and what's happening on Real Street. What I mean by Real Street is the fact that most people are not experiencing this economic expansion as the mainstream media would have you to believe. And so the articles today gives you some real numbers, give you some hard numbers on what's happening in the streets amongst those that are considered middle class and those are the ones that are being impacted the most as well as monetary policy as well as fiscal policy continue to squeeze out the real street economy for those that actually get up every day and go to work for there so as always I want you to take the time to read some of these articles for yourself to get a better idea of what's going on but more importantly I just want to skim the surface give you something to think about and the very first article here as it says almost half of Americans can't pay for their basic needs so this article came out today and it's very interesting is how almost half of the population of this country experienced some type of hardship last year in 2017 in the midst of this economic expansion that we're having where stock markets at an all time high and the overall confidence coming from mainstream news will have you to believe everybody is doing well but yet those who watch channels such as this know that that's not the case. So I'm going to give you some numbers here to shine a little light on what's really happening. And it says 4 in 10 Americans are struggling to pay for their basic needs, such as groceries or housing, a problem even middle class households confront, according to a new study from the Urban Institute. It says despite the U.S. economy being near full employment, 39.4% of adults between 18 and 64 old said they experienced at least one type of material hardship in 2017. So currently we're supposed to be at all time high of employment. So in actuality, it doesn't count approximately 100 million Americans that are not employed or out of the workforce. It says here, according to the study, which surveyed more than 7,500 adults about whether they had trouble paying for housing, utilities, food, or health care, said the findings surprised researchers at the Urban Institute who had expected to find high levels of hardship among poor Americans, but hadn't predicted so many middle class would struggle with their basic needs. So does that mean to illustrate that a middle class income is no guarantee of protection from the hardship, says Michael Cartman, research associate at the Urban Institute's Health Policy Center. So the idea that there's no guarantee no matter what class you are, unless you are one of the one percenters of those that are close to the water spigot, i.e. this QE that's been unleashed over the last decade, you're probably not receiving much aid overall. Going on a little bit more, it says the Urban Institute designed the study last year to get a baseline measure of hardship in anticipation of proposed cutbacks in federal safety nets program, such as proposals to add work requirements to food stamps as well as Medicaid. It says adults reporting hardship in 2017 is broken down to any hardship was 39.4, multiple hardships, 23.7, food insecurity, 23.3, problems paying medical bills, 18%, did not get medical care because of cost, 17.8%. And that's quite alarming, the fact that most people say, hey, I can't afford it, so I'm just going to suffer through the pain or whatever it might be. It says missed rent or mortgage payment, 10.2%. Evicted or forced to move, 11%, and so on. It says holding a job doesn't provide immunity to hardship, the study found. So I'm going to end it right there. But the idea that you can work as hard as you want when the system is rigged against you and wages do not rise with the real level of inflation, well beyond what your middle class or low income earner could ever compete against in this economy. So the very next article says 52.1% of kids live in households getting means tested government assistance. So this was as of last week. It says, will they be called the welfare generation, referring to those Generation Z children that are born in this time frame here. It says, today there are Americans under 18 years of age growing up in a country where the majority of their peers live in 
households that take means-tested assistance from the government. It says in 2016, according to the most recent data from the Census Bureau, there were approximately 73.5 million people under 18 in the United States, of which 38.365, or 52%, reside in households in which one or more persons receive benefits from a means-tested government program. It says these included SNAP, or Supplement Nutrition Assistant Program, Medicaid, Public Housing, Supplemental Security Income, and there's a couple more listed there. Scroll down a little bit more, it says, when examined by age bracket, persons under 18 were the most likely to live in a household receiving means-tested government assistance at 52.1%, while those 75 and older was least likely at 18.8%. So basically, if you're born into this country around this time frame here, you're automatically at a handicap since your household might fall into the categories of the very first article where it talks about half of the working population experienced some form of hardship last year. So go down a little bit more. It says, but Americans in all age brackets up to age 44 analyzed by the Census Bureau were more likely to be living in a household that received means-tested government assistance than overall national rate at 35.9. So these are just a few numbers I want to share with you in reference to what's happening right now in the real world, i.e. the real economy that most people are living in today. And so just based upon these statistics here, these are all numbers from prior years. So the very first article was from 2017, where it said almost half of Americans experienced hardship in 2017. And so the question question I would post to you guys is what do you think that number is this year because most people would agree that it hasn't gotten better for most families in this country especially with those dealing with issues with housing out in the west coast where it's very expensive I would imagine that number is probably well beyond half if not 60 maybe 70 percent according to the real economy that uh, we're all living in now so then you have the idea that children born into this generation currently are the victims of the families that are experiencing hardship because they're more than likely going to be on the receiving end of some type of government assistance which will more so leave them with the mindset that it's possible to fall back on your government as a crutch in times of hardship such as their parents might be experiencing right now. So I'm curious to find out what are your thoughts on the current statistics for 2018 since we're in August right now. If it was 39.4 last year and it was 52% in 2016, what are your thoughts on the numbers today? I would love to hear your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. More importantly, join me tonight for an RTD Live Talk. Let's talk about this in greater detail. Other than that, I'll see you in the next RTD News Update. It's the next recession. Recession. Recession will be. Will be a recession. We're going to hit a recession. The date of the next recession. A, a U.S. only recession typically lasts eight to ten months, but a lot of things about this particular one have not been typical. So, a, a crash is coming now, whether it's six months from now, 12 months, 36 months, no one knows. Uh, I go to bed every night, I dream of another recession. If you know what to do, um, if, if you have the right plan to set up, uh, you, can, you can make a lot of money from this.